Apparently, with our water bill, Long Beach organizes it by tiers, and we were at tier three, which is the highest usage. First of all, when you have grass, you have to keep it on a timer and you to keep it going, and it just takes a whole lot of water and maintenance. When I first moved here, it was very dry grass. It was very difficult to get something to grow. Hi, I'm Eddie Rosales. I lived in Long Beach for about 36 years. We were one of the participants in the Lawn to Gardens program that the Long Beach City Water has put out. We have gone through approximately three different lawns in the 15 or so years that we've lived here. Really hard packed clay, very inefficient, and our lawns would just wither away. Eight years ago we did it, it cost us about $2,500 to lay that out. It looked great for a little while, but after about a year or so, it just started to uh, go back to what it, it was. When we bought the house, it was just this large, vast lawn. It was outdated and it just was unwelcoming. It felt very sterile and stiff. My husband and I had a professor in college who turned us on to native plants. Just this whole movement, it was just an obvious concept that we had never considered, putting natives in your yard to attract wildlife. And I mean, just imagine if everyone did it, we'd have a, one giant wildlife corridor right here in our neighborhoods. So that's really what started us on our path to going all native. My husband had read about Lawn to Garden program in the paper one day, and he came home and told me about it. We were sort of in a panic because we were waiting for this opportunity to come. The most difficult part of it was getting accepted because there were so many people that wanted to be a part of it. So the morning of 8 a.m. was the start time. So my husband went down to Kinko's and faxed in the order at 8 a.m. And I had it all ready on the internet and I pressed send at 8 and sure enough, we got it. And what we heard was in half an hour, it was sold out. The city was really open to any sort of submission as far as design goes, as long as it met their basic requirements, which were really open. Basically, they would accept anything from a sketch to a formal plan. This is my plan. It looks like something from my the space but I have a good idea of what to do right there and it doesn't really have to be anything spectacular you just have to in your mind visualize what you plan to do pretty much I think I did everything online it was very easy very simple just step by step there was like pages and pages of plants that you can use and I went through made a list submitted everything and this is the result when you hear California friendly you think of dry cactusy plants things that you don't get too many flowers from and so this is kind of nice that it's not a cactus garden it's everything in it that I want. Do you like one garden or one lawn more than the other? I like this one more because it has more nature than just one type of like. This has all other plants and that is only grass. Look at this guy. Oh, that's a big juicy. <laughs> Let's put it down and then see if we can find a ladybug. Okay. Oh, look. Oh. You could see some bugs sometimes camouflaging mm -hmm. in the plants. You see? Spider. Oh my gosh. Do you think the garden has changed the way our family lives? It gave more nature to us. We're outside more, much more. We want to be outside. I think before we were wanting to shut our curtains. Now, not only does it give us privacy, but it, it's our little oasis. I feel sorry for people that still have lawns in some way. You know, occasionally we say, oh, it's so nice to have a big place for the kids to run and play, but we still have that. And frankly, the kids are much happier hunting for bugs. And sometimes Henry likes to come out, my four-year-old, and he likes to pick the California sunflower. Yeah, he gives them all to my mom. Yeah, he makes bouquets for me out of the flower. He like cuts them from the very bottom of the flower. He goes into the cupboard and finds like a bowl, remember? Hmm. And then he fills up with water and then he gives it to my mom. I'm out here twice a month pulling weeds and thinning and trimming, but it's therapeutic and it was something that I didn't get to do before. Our water bill's been cut in half on most months, so I hope that this is the wave of the future. Not thorny, huh? Nope. Just, just smooth. This keeps the bees going, it keeps all the birds going. We need to see more of this rather than just grass that is mediocre. So I haven't had to water only a couple of times. Probably saved a lot of money, even, even more not having to get the lawn cut. It's probably only half or less than what last year's bill was. First time I've had a garden this size, 
it's really nice to sit out and enjoy it. It's like tons of bees and probably about seven to ten hummingbirds that come to visit here. Lots of butterflies, ground squirrel that I had never seen in my life before. The rosemary is just so fragrant. I love this. I love cooking lamb with the rosemary. And then there's some lavender here that I love. Really enjoy lavender scones because they taste so good with honey butter. Everybody likes to stop and say, what a beautiful garden. Every time I'm out here weeding or whatever I'm doing outside, just sitting out, I meet lots of people. It's really nice. It's a labor of love and I really love how it came about. And it's really great to see other individuals in the neighborhood participating in the program. My neighbors next door, they have integrated their dry riverbed with my dry riverbed right on our property line. So it flows very nicely, very naturally. Previously, I would have a lot of water runoff. I used to puddle in front of my house, but that no longer is the case. All of the water that comes from our roof drains at the riverbed. The riverbed consists of about a four foot deep gravel pit for starters. So the water that comes off my roof does not go into the street and thus into the ocean. It goes right down to the aquifer as the dry riverbed just takes the water naturally. We probably put about $500 to $700 out of our pocket in order to get it going. The rebate took care of most of it. We were inspired. We just watched the progress of their yard taking shape and it was so beautiful. A lot of times when I was deciding where to plant things and where to put rocks, I was really thinking about the color wheel and how things fit. And I think it's actually more interesting than a solid green lawn. So for us, this actually mimics more our lifestyle and our value system than a green lawn does. Well said.